Hey everybody, this week we're going to talk about gambling locally. I have a review of our local KC area casinos. And you'll want to stay tuned to all the way to the end of the show because we've got a taste test of the hottest new fast food item in America. Just hit the shelves a couple of days ago. So stay tuned for this week's Wednesday show. Okay, so um, as I'm sure at least three or four of you remember, uh, a couple of weeks ago, went uh, on a little bit of a casino hopping tour with my good friend Kevin. Get well soon, Kevin. He's been uh, dealing with a mild case of the COVID and is doing well, but um, never, uh, never something you want to hear. But in any case, we uh, spent uh, about nine, 10 hours, I suppose, uh, traveling around to five of the major casinos in the Kansas City metropolitan area. I will say there is a sixth smaller casino in downtown Kansas City, Kansas called Seventh Street Casino. We did not visit there. From the people that have visited there, they said it's not really much to see. That being said, they promise uh, big returns and they, they, you know, they probably don't have much overhead. So, you know, maybe it's a good place to gamble. But we didn't make it there. Uh, um, I was having enough trouble getting lost uh, going to the places we went to. We didn't end up, uh, uh, didn't need to end up getting lost somewhere in the, uh, the uh, mean streets of Kansas City, Kansas. So we didn't uh, hit that place. So we started out our day at Harrah's. We made our way to Ameristar. Then uh, what's called now the Casino KC. Uh, and then the Argosy and finally the Hollywood casinos. Now, those represent four different players clubs um, because the Argosy and the Hollywood casino are part of the same group. So, and those were the last two places that we went, so we'll kind of cover those uh, at the end. If any of you are interested in a more sort of in-depth review of some of these properties, uh, let me know. We're gonna kind of just touch on a few highlights, uh, my impressions uh, of the properties, uh, throughout the time that they've been open and uh, from my experiences uh, a couple of weeks past. So, but let me know. I do know a number of folks uh, from outside the area, even outside the country, have at times expressed interest in, in what local casinos are like in the United States or in this part of the United States. Uh, four of the properties that we visited were in the state of Missouri, and Missouri has had what they originally called riverboat gambling for about a quarter of a century now. And all four of the properties that we visited uh, popped up um, within, you know, a couple of years of the uh, uh, legalization of uh, riverboat gambling in Kansas City. A few of them actually were boats that actually traveled up and down the Missouri River. I know um, Harris did. I know um, the Argosy did. Um, I'm not sure about what is now uh, the. I gotta check it out. Casino KC. I'm not sure if that uh, property ever uh, actually cruised, as they called it. Um, there was another property, Samstown, actually had a casino in Kansas City that didn't last more than about three, four, five years. It went under. Um, there's actually a video somewhere on the internet of uh, people that broke into the uh, into the boat that's still there uh, in uh, in Kansas City, Missouri, and then looked at what was left of Samstown. But but again, uh, it, and it initially those properties that you you actually paid an admission fee to go on these boats because they really were boats. Now, they used any excuse possible not to cruise or not to actually go out on the river, uh, but they did actually go out on the river for these little two hour tours. No Gilligan's Island, no three hour tours, but two hour tours. And uh, in addition to uh, you know having to board during, I think there was like a 30 minute window that you could get on the boat, maybe only 15, I'm not sure. And in many cases pay an admission fee, um, there was a limit to the amount of money you could wager and or lose. I think it was originally it was like $400. So you got a little card and I probably have one somewhere. I know I saw one a couple of years ago. I should have uh, dug it out, but uh, where every time that you bought in for, you know, say a hundred dollars on a blackjack game 
or if you purchased $40 worth of quarters because, again, this was 25 years ago, you played with real coins. Um, although I think in this case, I think everything was kind of a, um, was a token of sorts. But I could be wrong. If there's any KC area people that remember, let me know. So, uh, like I said, initially uh, all of those were these river boats, and now there's really no evidence of them being river boats. There's no gambling limitations. There's no cruising. There's a few spots if you know where to look. I know there's one at Harris because I've been there many times where you can actually see where the boat is theoretically submerged in water or a little inlet of the Missouri River. But uh, that uh, sort of charade had ended probably a decade ago, and it's pretty much just, you know, all out gambling at this point. Uh, I wouldn't say that any of the KC area casinos are particularly good places to gamble from the point of view of a return on investment. I know typically the, uh, the payback percentages are pretty poor in the 90% range. Uh, the video poker is pretty wretched. Um, even the video Kino is, is not very good. So uh, the interesting thing about the state of Missouri is they are, the casinos are specifically prevented from barring a player who's playing blackjack and counting cards. They can't bar you, it's against the law. <laughs> now you can imagine the blackjack conditions are probably not the best and they have other ways of, of making you sweat and of making you not enjoy your experience, but this kind of an interesting quirk about the state of Missouri. Um, the final casino that I mentioned is the Hollywood Casino, and it came about, uh, oh, I don't know, probably a decade, maybe 10, 15 years ago, um, as a result of some limited uh, um, legalization of gambling in the state of Kansas. The only other casino I'm aware of that um, came about as a result of this was a place called Kansas Star, which is down in Mulvane in the in the Wichita area, and I've never been there. It is a void property. So uh, just uh, like I said, just briefly, Hare is a property I visited many, many times. Uh, I've been a, um, you know, as I say, Total Rewards, Caesars Rewards member at the, uh, you know, platinum and diamond level for, you know, five, six years. So uh, room comps are easy. The rooms themselves are a little rough around the edges. Uh, I've done a number of room tours there. Uh, and the place could definitely use uh, some new carpeting, which is pretty typical of, uh, of hotels anywhere, to be fair. Uh, everyone there very friendly. Um, my impressions uh, two weeks ago, a lot of new machines have uh, come online in the last year or so. Places definitely feels a lot cleaner, uh, more sort of scrubbed than it did in the past. Um, so they used to have a pretty active poker room. It does is not open at the moment. Uh, and I don't think there are any poker rooms in Kansas City open at the moment, although uh, we will touch on that here in just a second as we move along. Uh, very easy room comps, uh, which is not terribly surprising for a sort of the mid-tier um, Caesars Rewards property. Um, but uh, yeah, nice place. Um, uh, food options are a little more limited. They close down the buffet. Um, they also had kind of a noodle place. And uh, the old uh, Diamond Lounge, Laurel Lounge, of course, is closed down as well since uh, El Dorado basically shut that whole thing down. But um, it is a pretty easy property to get to. It's in North Kansas City. Um, I like it. It's fine. You know, it's easy surface parking. You can get to your room in no time. They all have little mini fridges in them so you can store away your goodies. Um, but um, again, probably not a place that's worth a special trip uh, unless you're passing through Kansas City and you just want to do a little gambling. The second property we went to was the Ameristar, and the Ameristar is a number of miles to the east of uh, the Harris property. It is actually in Kansas City. Um, it is just past the 435 loop which if anyone's been to Kansas City, maybe out to Arrowhead or Kauffman Stadium, uh, the major sort of freeway that passes just to the west of those uh, stadium uh, is 435. And if you follow 435 uh, a few miles up to the north and exit on uh, 210, you will within a couple of miles reach Ameristar. I'd say far and away the largest property of all of them, including Hollywood. Um, Ameristar and Harris, I neglected to mention, are both two-story properties. So um, 
but you know, there, there is gambling on multiple levels. I did notice there wasn't a lot of activity on level two at the Ameristar, but um, again, a very large property. Um, unlike Harris, which shut down their sort of uh, nightclub uh, concert venue, which was called Voodoo Lounge, which is interesting, the same uh, name that they use for uh, the thing in Rio. Um, but they have a uh, sort of pavilion there where they get, you know, sort of your classic 70s, 80s, 90s pop country acts and occasional comedians, that sort of thing. Um, a, a much larger number of food options on site. Uh, in all likelihood, the hotel there is much nicer, though I haven't stayed there. Uh, it is now a Boyd property, which is kind of cool because as a regular Boyd customer for years, uh, I always had to hope that I would get back to Vegas in time to uh, to meet that little six-month window that Boyd has for uh, keeping your comps active. Uh, so now, you know, I can just go to Ameristar some weekend and, and gamble for a little bit. So uh, it is a very nice property. It's a, it's a very large property. It probably feels the most like a Las Vegas casino. And the place that probably feels the least like a Las Vegas casino, in fact, I mentioned to my friend Kevin when we were there that it had much more of sort of a tribal casino feel. And that is, and I got to look at it again, Casino KC. Casino KC is probably just three or four miles north of downtown Kansas City on I-29, I-35. It opened its life as the Flamingo Hilton, believe it or not, although there was never a hotel there, at least not to my knowledge complete with a pink flamingo and all and it has gone through a number of different renovations incarnations over the years uh, most recently it was an isle isle of capri or isle de capri casino and was actually owned by el dorado so when uh, el dorado took over caesars a year or so ago one of the properties they jettisoned was the uh, casino there in kansas city if you drive by, at least unless they've changed it in the last uh, two weeks, uh, it still says Isle of Capri Casino, but uh, the uh, Players Club card now simply says Casino KC. Uh, it is, frankly, uh, I don't know how to put this nicely, it's kind of the rough and tumble kind of ghetto casino. Uh, it is, uh, I will say, though, that I think of all the properties that we visited, it was the one I, we were most surprised at. It's definitely a lot cleaner. They had a lot of new slot games. Um, so, I, I said, I uh, was fairly impressed with what they'd done with the place, and uh, perhaps the new uh, ownership will continue to make improvements there. And, of course, it is, like I said, it's probably the most convenient if you're staying in downtown Kansas City. So, I think there's only, like, one little sort of, cafe restaurant there uh, but uh, people there seem very friendly and uh, definitely cleaner than it used to be so possibly worth checking out now if you want to get lost you could try to go to the Argosy Casino because I managed to get lost going coming and going to the Argosy Casino um, yeah don't really uh, I'm not even going to try to tell you how to get there it is uh, um, in a little town called Riverside Missouri which is, as you might imagine, on the river, because the casino is on the river. And the Argosy has made a ton of improvements since its early days, as I think it was, I think it may have been the first of the actual riverboat casinos in Kansas City. I know I went there many times, and it was one of the ones I actually cruised the Missouri River uh, on. So it was kind of cool. Um, they added a hotel, and it's been quite a number of years ago now, probably, again, probably 10, 15 years ago since they had the hotel. I was impressed by the look of the property. It has a, a pretty interesting, I don't know, kind of southwestern kind of desert motif. I, I don't know exactly how to describe it. Uh, but again, I thought it was a nice property, a pretty good size property, and um, it does have a hotel. Uh, which again, I have not stayed at, but my understanding is it's it's fairly nice. Again, like Ameristar, uh, almost certainly better than at least the sort of base rooms at Harrah's. Um, but uh, but yeah, Argosy uh, it was a nice spot. Um, enjoyed our time there. I didn't really have too much luck there, as I recall. But uh, but and again, one of the a bigger property. I would say on the Missouri side, uh, it would be Ameristar, and then Argosy would be the second largest property there. Now, Argosy is part of 
the My Choice Players card program, uh, which is with Penn National. Um, and so that um, actually connects in um, with the last property we're going to talk about, which is the Hollywood Casino in Kansas City, Kansas, but also um, connects in with the M Resort in Las Vegas and, you know, until the ownership transfer comes to pass, also the Tropicana. I do know a number of people who played a fair amount at Argosy and or Hollywood who got free room offers at the Trop. So I don't, I don't know how common that, obviously that's not going to be the case in the future when Tropicana gets uh, officially taken over by Bally's, but uh, you know, maybe they'll get some room offers at the M Resort. So they are tied together. So finally, our last property is in Kansas City, Kansas. In the area, just uh, if any of you are racing fans, there's a uh, the uh, racetrack in Kansas City is on the other side of the 435 loop, um, on the far uh, west end of the Kansas City metro area. Um, there's a huge shopping area, uh, retail, uh, restaurants and everything around there in addition to the racetrack. And then um, the Kansas Speedway, and then you have the Hollywood Casino, uh, which is a generally speaking, I've always thought it was a really nice casino. There's not an attached hotel, so in that way, it's like uh, the Casino KC. Um, but uh, I mean, there are some nearby uh, hotels and motels available. There has been discussion that they might build a hotel. Obviously, the last uh, couple of years have, have mitigated against that happening uh, at you know soon. But um, I'd say we were probably most disappointed in Hollywood. It looked rough. There were whole areas of the casino that were still kind of shut down. There were still a number of sort of plexiglass dividers up. So whether there's simply been a uh, sort of disparity between when some of the restrictions uh, were relaxed in Kansas City, Kansas versus Kansas City, Missouri, I don't know. Um, a lot of the machines just kind of seemed old. Um, the place, I mean, the place is by no means what I say was dirty or anything like that, but it just uh, it just felt kind of worn as uh, any casino or hotel property is going to feel over time. But uh, um, but it is a big casino. It's it's very easily accessible. You don't have to get into the center city of Kansas City, Kansas, or Missouri. So, um, you know, if you're in the area, particularly if you're in town for one of the races, it's definitely worth checking out. And there are a number of bars and restaurants there, although uh, based on our experience, a number of them are also closed um, during the week, though that could change at any time. So anyway, there's a kind of short, not as short as I might have hoped, uh, review of the casinos in the Kansas City area. Um, I do have a few photographs of Harris and some video there uh, from a few years ago. But again, we can talk in more detail about any of those casinos. If you have any questions, let me know. I know uh, Gambling Granny and such uh, uh, spent some time in Ameristar a few months back. Um, so uh, there you go. All right, so we're going to take a break, a real quick break, and we're going to come back with the hottest fast food item in America. Stay tuned. Okay, everybody, you never know quite what you're going to get. Uh, on the Wednesday show, and so today, which is actually Tuesday as I record this, is a Try It Tuesday. We've got some uh, Popeye's Nuggets here. This just uh, came out the last couple of days. Got to look at those. There's supposed to be eight of them in there. I notice they have a tendency to give you more than you actually asked for, so. But they look quite good. Nice, uh, crunchy shell. Got myself some Blackened Ranch. The dip of the stars. So we're gonna flip the camera around. I'm gonna uh, eat a couple of these because I know, uh, particularly uh, PJ and uh, Pennies have been uh, looking forward to seeing me eat again on camera. So uh, we'll be right back. Okay, here's me in desperate need of a shave. I'm gonna trim this off. It's starting to look rough. But anyway, so we got the Popeyes chicken nugget. Just uh, came out a couple of days ago. It didn't take me too long to get a uh, hold of this. I just had to wait maybe five minutes um, to uh, get this. Uh, here we go. I'm going to try it. Mm. 
Okay, so uh, first things first, very crispy, um, but not crispy as in way, way too much coating. Uh, that does tend to happen once in a while with uh, tenders or nuggets. In fact, I'd even say the one strike I might have against um, Popeye's tenders is they do sometimes have a bit too much in the way of grass. Let's open one of these up. Uh, definitely tastes like a real piece of chicken. Looks like a real piece of chicken. It's my face, which does not look like a real piece of chicken. So far as I can tell, there's just one flavor of this. There's no spicy nuggets or anything like that. Uh, I don't know if it's a local thing or an out the uh, premier thing, but I was able to get just the eight nuggets, which is all I wanted anyway. Uh, it was just three ninety nine, so that's a pretty good deal. Uh, as you can see, they're pretty good sized nuggets. Um, but yeah, so real crispy. Chicken is very juicy. Yeah, very juicy. Um, so, enough of that. We're going in for the Blackened Ranch. Never had the Blackened Ranch. You need to try it. Absolutely the way to go. Um, these are great. There's nothing to complain about. Um, like I said, my personal taste, I would have rather had a little bit of a spicier crust. So maybe instead of it being a 10 out of 10, it's a 9.5 out of 10. But as far as nuggets go, um, I'd say probably the gold standard for me anyway uh, would probably be the Chick-fil-A nuggets. Um, because again, you've got the sort of real chicken and a good flavor. Um, these are right there with it. Um, these are right there with it. So I'm going to go ahead and finish these on my own. We're going to send it back to the rest of the Wednesday show, whatever that is. So uh, thanks for joining. Yep, Popeye's Nuggets. Check them out. Tasty treat on Try It Tuesday. Okay, there you go. You've been waiting to watch me eat since I had that like macaroni and cheese thing like two months ago. So I definitely hit up the Popeye's Nuggets. They're really good. Okay, it, this show has gone on way too long, uh, but I think we had some good information today. We're going to be back, as always, on Saturday with Vegas Weekly. We're going to do two shows next week. I'm committing myself to it right here. I don't know what I'm pointing at. I'm committing myself to it. On Monday, we will be doing the fourth of our podcast, and we will be sharing that podcast to YouTube. So it'll just be like a a logo and me talking for 15 or 20 minutes, but we're going to share it to YouTube in the hopes of uh, trying to get a little bit of a sort of cross pollination there. And then next Wednesday, we'll have another big show. I know uh, PJ has uh, been concocting a cocktail of questionable quality over the last several days. So we'll look forward to seeing what he has to say. I think we might do a little bit of a field trip somewhere here in Lawrence or beyond, so we will want to stay tuned for that. And we keep uh, threatening to do a live stream. We're definitely going to do one before my September trip to Vegas, uh, maybe in the next two or three weeks. So that'll be fun. Uh, you can all you can all send me money that I can gamble in Vegas when we do that, or not, if you prefer. So. Okay, so everybody, thanks for spending some time with us here midweek on Vegas Tips and Tricks. We'll be back on Saturday, as always, with another episode of Vegas Weekly. Until then, I hope you have a great, lucky, and healthy week. We will see you soon, my friend. Bye-bye.